today is you will to ensure that you're academically successful and that you will walk the stage within three years to graduate. Have any of you attended a graduation event? Let me see. None? It's a fantastic, fantastic event to be there. If you're in the seat of going on with your beautiful gown, it's fantastic, but also to be a spectator. Right, so to just to explain the logistics for today, this session we do record. And some of you that started to navigate on my LMS, remember tomorrow we have a systems day, my LMS day. If you don't know how, you will know after tomorrow. So why is this important? There's an orientation and induction tile on my LMS. You scroll down to Tiger Valley and you will see all the presentations, all the information that we shared this last week and a half. So I'm not going to introduce myself again. I think you all know me by now, Cornel, the Academic Student Experience Manager, but I'm going to introduce you to my co-presenter, uh, Paulette Fortain. She is now in the part-time online space. She was part of my wonderful team, but she's now a student advisor there. But she initiated and started and drive employability a lot, and that's why I asked her to be our guest presenter. So welcome, Paulette. So I'm going to give hand over to her. The first part will be about how will you make sure you've got a good job after your studies, and then we will go on with academic success. We will have then a short break, and then afterwards a very important introduction, how we accommodate all students with special challenges regarding learning. Because some of us have brilliant brains that work differently, and therefore, we must give you some different environment, maybe, to study in and to do your test. Lovely. So I'm going to hand over to Paulette. And she will continue with employability. Thank you. Just with the mic. Okay. So the work readiness, we're going to start off talking about the work readiness and career services. Then we're going to look at the Teams per block. Then we're going to look at employability events and also our employability center that we have on campus. So this is our employability lead, Marna Bessel. So she sits at our national department, currently at Midland. Uh, yes. So I am available to consult with you on campus level, but should you want to consult with her, she is online and she will be able to speak to you to the different expertise in her career path, okay? so. She is our employer quality lead. She works with the stakeholders and different companies um, that eventually employ our students when they graduate. So now we're going to look at the work readiness topics and how we do it per block, what is covered. So let me just see, is there some of your students that have worked previously? All right, nice. Yeah, being proactive. Um, did you work in your line of expertise that you're studying towards now? Or is it just simply a, a part job, part-time job, like a weekend job, holiday job? Holiday job? Okay, that's nice. So here we're more focused on, you know, getting you into your career space where you need to be. Getting you into an IT job, getting you into an accounting job, because that is your area of expertise. All right? So we have different teams in the block where we focus on these things. And I would advise you to go into the employability tile on Madam S, where you can have a look and sit in on the workshops that is there to your availability, because it's quite important to start at the early stage. I have students in third year only trying to, you know, attend these workshops now. It's a little bit too late. So we want you to be proactive, we want you to engage, we want you to ask questions because that's the only way that you're going to learn and grow. 
All right. So in block one, we have our LinkedIn professional network. So here we help you, you know, set up your LinkedIn profile. We have workshops on how to design your LinkedIn, what is needed to be on LinkedIn. We don't want you to sit in a bar on a photo on LinkedIn. That's not uh, the way to be professional on LinkedIn. OK, and we don't want you to be um, inboxing people on LinkedIn. We only use it for professional purposes. So we're doing all those Q&A in those, those type of workshops so that you know how to utilize LinkedIn to your benefit um, in your professional space. So we teach you how to set up the profile, what is needed, how to align the profile in terms of your qualifications, OK? And then block two. Now we're going a little bit deeper. So we're focusing on the CV and the cover letter writing. I'm sure those of you that have started or uh, applied for a job uh, knows that a CV is very important and what you put on your CV is very important. So we take you through workshops where uh, we tell you, you know, this is important for your CV. Please take out that, you know, uh, this is your hobby because it might be maybe a bad influence on your professional career. So we take you through those steps to tell you what to add, what not to add, what can make your CV um, better. And also in terms of the IT space, you know, in terms of the languages that you do, please add that in the BA space. If you did volunteering, please add that because people might think that, you know, I'm volunteers. It's not that important. But it is. It's experience that you gain along the way. All right, so then after we've, you know, what do you with your CV, we look at the interview and the soft skills. All right, now we're teaching you how to go into the interview. So during these spaces, um, we teach you how to interview soft skills, what questions might be asked in interviews. Um, we have even scheduled meetings where we have mock interviews with the students and then the students can come and sit in with the SAAs. We do a mock interview together with Courtney and then we give you tips on how to improve. Because obviously sometimes people I quote, they have the qualification, they do not necessarily know how to present themselves to other people. They might be nervous and that might lead you into not getting the opportunity because you're so nervous about it. you're not well prepared. And the only way that you're going to get a job is if you're well prepared and you answer the, the questions confidently. So we're going to teach you that type of skills um, during those sessions in block three. Then we have block four. That is the job search and application. So for you first years, that if you don't necessarily want to go into the job now, that might not be to your uses. It's always very knowledgeable to know how to search for a job. So I would also advise that you sit in and see how it works. So for future references that you know, OK, this is how I search for a job. I don't just type in IT jobs because you're not being specific. You can't just type in BA jobs. You're basically going to get a variety of everything not pertaining to your certain needs, OK? So then we move along to our annual career fair that we have every year. So this needs this normally takes place in block three. So what happens here is that we have a whole range of companies coming to our campus. So this is a show of them. Here you come, you come and get the necessary information from them, you ask questions. So we're putting you in a room with professional people working directly, whether that be in B form, whether that be in accounting, whether that be in the BA psychology section, whether that be in HR, whatever, you name it, the people are here to assist you, okay? And you can ask them questions, and it could also be beneficial for you guys, because, I mean, if you know already where you're heading towards, you're working towards a goal, it's very important for you to always attend and, you know, just get the feel of things. You don't necessarily have to take a pamphlet. Just see the vibe, see how things is going. So next year when you come, you know what to ask, you know, um, which people you are interested in because they might just be doing some presentations. You can do some little bit of research on that people that attended the career fair. All right. But don't worry. Don't stress about it. 
We also have a week before or two weeks prior to the career fair, we have what we call recruit a boss, meaning that we prepare, yep. we do a little bit of a recap on the four blocks or the three blocks that we already have done. So we do a little bit of a recap every day. So we have the LinkedIn day, we have the interview day, we have the CV day, just to do a recap for you because we know, you know, you've done something in block one, you might not remember it still. So just to refresh your brain, get your CV sorted. So when it comes to the career pain, you want to bring your CV along, which is very beneficial. I've had students last year that actually um, got opportunities from these people. Just by bringing their CV, you look very smart because that's also very important how you present yourself. You know, you can't go there uh, looking sloppy, you know, not seeming, looking like you're interested in wanting a job. We want you to be hungry. We want you to grow. We want you to show them why you are here and why you think you would be the best candidate. All right? So that is more or less our career fair. Then for the people who are studying IT, who is the IT people? <coughs> oh, wonderful. We have a whole classroom, and I'm sure there's a lot on floor as well. Uh, for the IT people, so in your second and third year, you know, you can do projects on your own. And then we have this event on in September where we have TV set up for you. And then you created the project, um, say for instance, coding in the background, whatever. You designed a certain app, you display that app for them, they come, they look at your work. And I've had last year, I think more or less seven students that got opportunities on the day for the job. So we create that platform for you. Um, first, yes, they welcome to come and see how it works, how it uh, is being displayed out. So um, when you second and third year and you have a project, you go to Ms. Ndai, who's over here with the mic, and you speak to her, you give her your project. Obviously, she will Q and A with you and she will sit with you with your project before you can present it. And then she will select, okay, the students, you know, their projects will do. Because obviously, we don't want to display sloppy work. I have had people that was your IT professionals, they bring the HR, they bring the IT technician, the one that's the expert in the coding and everything. So they look at your code, they can definitely see when it has been copied. And I've, I've, I've been standing in that rooms last year and they, they come back to me and say, okay, that one has copied. So please people, don't copy. Try and be, um, try and initiate your own work, try and do better and stay away from YouTube. Use it as a tool to create your own coding and create your own app. Be innovative. Yeah, for this project, is it's quite important because you can definitely get some great opportunities out of it. I haven't had the slide on the graphic design showcase as well. Is there any students doing graphic design? All right, wonderful. Welcome. So we have the graphic design showcase um, also in November. We have students in showcasing their projects, what they have done, the artwork in your case. Um, and then we have companies coming to see your work. And also those companies then offer those students job um, opportunities. So they'd be interested in your work and they find it that it's very innovative and it's uh, about uh, the quality of your work as well. Huh? So we can be. <laughs> okay. So we also, um, amongst all the other cam campuses, we have a employability center. So this means that, you know, you can sit there, there's a two computers set up. There is some um, guidelines on the board which links to um, what you can do, how you can create your CV just for interest. Right? There's links on the computers to the specific um, job search engines that by a click you are on that job uh, search engines such as the LinkedIn one, the Yes24 and all the different uh, career job search engines that there is. So please people feel free to make use of that computers that you it's by click of a button, your CV is there. There's also CV templates on there where you just insert your information. And one important thing about CVs, the ones that you create nowadays with the six boxes. 
AI doesn't read your code. Okay, they don't read your text. So make sure that you have the correct format of the CV because if you check on LinkedIn now, guys, you have a hundred applicants. But you wonder why am I I fit the job to the T? But it's because of your CV format that you're not getting that opportunity. Because AI, they put the CV through some AI, AI doesn't scan the text inside the text box because if you close it, it's almost like, uh, I don't know, the IT people would know about that in terms of coding. Um, it oversees that text and it only sees like the Word document. If it's in a Word document, it's fine. But if it's in a certain text box, it doesn't necessarily pick up when you use AI to detect certain words amongst the text in the document, all right? So that is also something quite important that you need to look out for, all right? Yeah. Then we move over to our success stories, which brings me to almost the end of my presentation. I don't know if you can see very clearly, but if you want to see the full stories, you're more than welcome to go into the employability tile. The, these are students that have been successfully employed. They were very happy happy at our institution. Myself, I come from a public institution that is very well known, but I can definitely say the resources that EDUVOS gives is much better and they equip you much better for the world of work than any other um, public institution. Because yeah, we take care of you, we make sure that you're ready, we make sure that you have something when you leave the campus here and we make sure that you are ready for the world of work. OK, so that's really something different that we bring to the campus. I'm not going to go through all of these, but as you can see, here uh, is a higher certificate in information system, software development. We have a BCom law student here. We have a Bachelor of Commerce. We have BSc IT in software engineering. We have a graphic design. And then we also have a BA student over there. So there's a variety of things that you can go into. All right. Is there any questions in terms of employability? Any questions? Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Paulette. Um, and we're very proud to say that um, even our Pullets of this company. Since she's been here, she's moving through the roles and you can really listen to her because I think she speaks from her heart and from own experience. Now, many of you might think now, and students online, we don't forget about you. Um, your answers will be, your questions will be answered in the online chat and afterwards we will have an open floor. But now you will think, now, why did we this morning decide to start with employability before we're going to talk about student success? It's because we've got so much um, confidence in you that we know that you will take the information that we will share here from research, from experience, what we've seen playing out and having interviews from students, that you will be successful and then you will think of employability. There's also a lot of internships offered from second year. Um, that's very important. And we've got our community clubs that can also give you nice exposure to put on your CV. So I'm going to talk on the following topis, topics today. And the first big one is, I think you all sit here and think, will I be successful? Is there anyone here that will say, yes, I'm confident, I know I will graduate. This is easy. Oh, I see some confidence there. I like that. Right. We need that. But I'm sure most of you feel like I felt when I studied. Oh, my goodness. Do I have enough brains to do this? You know, um, so we're going to talk about that. And secondly, what is the academic support that we give you here on campus? Utilize it. We're there for you. And then SOS, I'm at risk. And listen to me, students. It will happen. You can ask for late. Year in week three. When the assignments come in and you have to study for tests and you've got three modules and you're like, oh, then you suddenly realize, oh my goodness, I'm so behind. And I failed the test maybe for the first time in my life. That sometimes also happened. 
or you get zero for an assignment because you use AI without knowing it. That will happen. We've got tips on that. And then lastly, something I feel very passionate about is inclusion on our campus. We offer accommodations for any student with special learning um, challenges. Also, we have a lot of students nationally with physical disabilities that struggle with um, vision, hearing, and they study and they graduate and we accommodate them. Right. So let's start. Will I cope with university? Mm -mm. Who in this room can honestly say they haven't asked this for themselves? I'm sure you sit here and say, oh, will I cope? Will I be able to do this? Maybe some of you are the first in your family to actually study on a tertiary level. And then there's a lot of pressure. I see a few nods. Right. The big question is, what is the skills that you need to be academic successful to pass your year one? Is it intelligent? Can I see some hands? How many of you think it's all about the IQ? Yo, you're clever. You're clever, very clever. <laughs> you're right. It's not just about your IQ. It's a combination. It's a package. You need other skills to be successful. Can I ask any ideas? What's the other skills? Any hands? What do you think? Yes. Discipline towards your schoolwork. Yes, self-discipline, very important. Communication skills also. Yes, time management, sure, that's important. Being able to work in a team. Being able to work in a team, and I'm so glad you say that because some of your assignments is group assignments at the back. Being able to use it. Yes. Very, very important to use your resources. Sometimes we forget about our resources and so we think we must do it on our own. Now to test how clever you are, because sure, I'm blown away. I've got a riddle. And the one that's going to win is going to get this nice pack of knickknacks here next to me. The riddle, and you, I want you to raise your hand first one up, I will ask. The riddle is, and it's a reality, it's actually the truth. Did you know in South Africa, there's one word spelled wrong in the dictionary. Which one? I saw that hand first. The word wrong. Yeah, give a hand to our clothes. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, so, can you see students? <laughs> it's all about logic thinking. Sometimes the answer isn't right in front of you, but you think, oh, I must work on a higher level. So there is the other factors, and we call them non-cognitive skills because it's not about what's going on in your brain. It's actually, and dear, you must say thank you for your mother and father. It's sometimes temperament. It's sometimes skills, something that they drilled into you um, that give you the package to be successful. And you can look at of all of these factors, and I'm going to be honest with you, I think some you already touch on a lot of the obvious skills, but you know what? Social support. Why did we suffer in COVID so much? In what grade were many of you when it was COVID, 2020? Yeah, how did you do that? It, it must have been horrible. No social support, all alone. Can you remember that time? Social support is extremely important, and that's why when we talk about our academic support on campus, you will see it's in a social setting. We work better together in a group because we are group animals. That is who we are. The other thing I want to highlight is your response to stress. If you are tend, and it's many times in our genetics, if there's a little bit of anxiety and stress in your family, your body is wired to go in a fight flight mode when you're stressed. And what happens? All the blood goes to the lung and the heart and the big muscles because you must now fight flight. You must run away for the lion, the exam. And what happens? There's no blood in the brain. Then you go blank. 
How many of you have experienced that? You sit and you think, oh, I know, I studied this, I know, but it's not there. Hey, wake up, where's my brain? My brain is gone. That is anxiety. Now, some tips for you as bosses to be academically successful. Some of them are very obvious, but let me tell you, the top one is the most important one. Go to your class. <laughs> I've been student myself. The eight o'clock class in the mornings when it's cold and it's raining outside. Yo, and it's on the on campus day. Mm -mm. Can I sleep a bit later and I'm late for class? I'm sure the lecture will not do such important work. I will catch up later and then later is never. Go to your class and remember students, we at Erevos have a flip class room approach. That means when you go into the lecture space, you must have prepared for your, for your class. On my LMS, there's a lot of, you will see there's a lot of class activities. There's a lot of reading that you can do. There's maybe some quizzes even that you have to do, some important terms that you must know. Uh, for example, let me take psychology. How many of you are first year be a psychology student? Thank you. I'm going to use that because that is my pre degree. I come from humanities. So let's say you have to prepare now for um, social psychology module. Fantastic. It's all about why beha humans behave in a certain way in a social setting. And you just walk in and there's Let's just say, yes, tell me, what is a heuristic? Do any of you know? Who of you know what is the group think phenomena? Now you sit there, oh my goodness. You didn't prepare, so you don't know what is that term, so you're going to miss out. So please, the lecture is not going to lecture like me today. I'm, I feel sorry for you because you knew Vasi, so I, I can't do a flip classroom uh, uh, presentation this morning. I must give you the tips and you must take it home and use it. The other thing um, I think what's also very important is to read actively. You're going to find this lot more reading to do. And if you're very clever, get Adobe Read for you. You place, it reads for you. And it's very visual or very, very auditory. Um, if you're on your way somewhere, you all have your ear sets, headsets. It's a fantastic skill. Um, and very important at the number eight is think positively. Optimism is the way to go. And lastly, please reach out for help. It's extremely important. Is there any questions or is there any of you that want to add something from your own experience or want to elaborate that how did one of these tips help you? Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I put your name from Adobe, Adobe Read. Anybody that wants to share maybe from own experience, how many of you have a wonderful study environment? Okay. And you've got somebody that brings coffee and Snacks for you while you're studying, hey. I'm. I was also. <laughs> I was also a mommy of two students many years ago, and it was lovely. You feel so sorry for your little one, and you you buy them the exam treats, right? You need that support. So if you don't have a mommy and daddy, get somebody, a friend, a loved one. Get a dog. Get an animal. Get a fish. Get a bird. Somebody that can keep you company, right? Now let's go to academic support. Students, we want to ensure student success. It's for our institution. It's that's why I'm here. This is, I look forward to that graduation day. I have many times tears in my eyes when I see some of the students that I know we walked a long road, it was difficult. And there they walk, they graduate. It is a fantastic, fantastic experience because we want to support you. And therefore, we've got support. So what can you firstly do? Remember, we can put all the support there for you.
But if you don't come to the party, it's not going to be beneficial. So first, I want you to do a bit of introspection now and say, what can I do? Because you you think, oh, I will never get in academics trouble and say, oh my goodness, you will. Because it's 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 tertiary level. It, this is not the trick, or this is a different ball game, and it's a fast paced. A lot of academic material is thrown onto you, and you must you must prioritize many times and plan. Put up a calendar. When is what assignment due to make sure that you study and start at? Because that's the, I think in first year level the biggest um, complaints I get. A student will sit and say, oh, I thought I could do the assignment in two days. But if you read on the module guide, it mentioned that you should actually spend 72 hours on the assignment. So then it's not really possible to do it in two days because you can't do it on 72 hours straight back to back. So you must start it early and maybe in the same place. And very important, talk to your lecturer. So when you're in class, and I want to emphasize this, students. You will have a class representative. That class representative must be a strong leader, passionate about studies and student life. When anything is wrong in the class, if you think this lecture is not lecture correcting correctly, they're not on time. They 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 talk about other stuff that I don't understand. They don't explain it good enough for me. Go to this class rep. Because I get a bi-weekly report from all the class reps, what's happening in the classroom. And I, I, I've got very specific questions in a form that they must answer. I even have a question, is the lecture on time? We want to make sure, we check them. We want to make sure they are there for you. So your class rep is your first line. Then if you don't get joy, you speak to your lecturer. Book consultations with your lecturer. And don't forget to eat and drink. I've seen students here in, in peak times when it's just before exams, they look like zombies. They look that, uh, that they actually have been dead for three days because they, there's nothing, because they're exhausted. Some of the other aspects I think is very clear cut. Again, don't. If you have a learning challenge, for example, you struggled at school, you struggle to write, you struggle to read. I don't want to use the words dyslexia, but that is what the world decided to make a diagnosis of, or ADHD, or autism, or all of those terms. I am a, in my previous life, I'm a clinical psychologist. So that is a reality in my life, but I want you to think differently. Your brain wires different. Your brain learn in a different way and give information in a different way. Why do you think is some of the top entrepreneurs in the world, they will talk, they will tell you, at school I struggled, I had dyslexia. They use their brains in a very different way. I'm the jealous of them. But because the world have decided the ordinary way is the right way, they made it an issue, and therefore we don't make it an issue here on campus. We make it inclusive. We say, come. We will give you a separate venue. We will give you 50 minutes extra. And I will, after the break, have a whole session on that. So don't ignore it. Don't hide it. Come and speak to me. We want to help. And then lastly, you've met our beautiful counselor yesterday, Mignon Elliott. She's there for you. She's there to make sure that you're well. You can always speak to her. Is there any questions on what you can do before I will tell you what we do for you? Anybody? You're fine. Can we go on? Yes. I will share with you after when I, I, I discuss it um, in the session, after the break. Hi, Kune. Okay. So what do we do? Hi, Kune. Who of you know by now who is your student advisor? I see some hats. Who is your student advisor? She's your HR, your secretary, your mom. Hey, right. right. So if you struggle with your academics, you've spoken to your class rep, you've spoken to your lecturer, no joy. Who do you go to? Student advisor. Right. Now the student advisors with me in a team, we have at-risk tracking. That means without you knowing, 
we can go on to my LMS and we can see how much you engage with your module content. AI helps me to see, oh, this student complains, he don't understand the work, but he only engaged 20% of the learning material. So then he will not understand. It. So then I will call you in and say, what's going on? Are you in the right direction? Are you in the right qualification? Maybe you must prioritize your studies. So we have an at-risk tracking tool. We look how much you engage with your modules. We're not policemen. We do it because we want you to be successful. Secondly, we can see how much you attend your classes. Remember, attending is done with every class. Then I look at your marks. I look at the online quizzes, the assessments. Is there a sudden drop in marks? Or is there zero, zero, zero? Or are they a high performer and then suddenly? So we have a whole system to ensure to at risk tracking to flag. So if you get a call from your beautiful student advisor telling you, listen, I want to book a consultation with you. I'm worried about your academics. You will know it's because of the data we received from what's happening. So that's the first thing. Then we have our special needs accommodation for spe special learning that I will explain after the break. But then we have lecturer interventions. What is that? Lecturers will notice that your, all my students did very bad in one test. Then they will schedule either little group consultations with you, one-on-one -on -one consultations, or revision classes. We've got lecturers here on campus the week before exams. They will ask me, what venues can they use? Because they've got revision classes, and that helps a lot. How many of you had revision classes on school level? I think it's, and it's working, hey? It helps you, it lets you engage in a different way with your work. The other thing that I want to highlight is you can book a specific consultation with your lecturer as well. You can tell your lecturer, listen, I don't have a clue what's going on. It feels like you talk Greek. I don't know what's going on. Let's work together and they will help you. Then study groups. How many of you had a study group previously in your life? I see some hands. It is amazing, but you must also do some fun things. I was once part of a study group and we studied in McDonald's. <laughs> but we studied. It was lovely, but we timed ourselves and say after two hours of studies, we can go and have a nice milkshake or ice cream, or a goodie meal. It's important that you spoil yourself. Then on campus, we've got academic tutoring. It's usually senior students that in their private space, they will advertise that they do tutoring, especially we've got at-risk modules. Now, what do you think? What is the at-risk module? It's that terrible module with a reputation of very high failure, failing rate the first test. Do you know on school that there was also that terrible subject everybody hated? Maths, I hear maths, oh. And what about science? Yeah, okay. Now, per, qual per qualification, I don't want to scare you. There is at-risk modules. Um, maybe I can share with you, um, I know in humanities, there's a uh, introduction to psychology. Now everybody think, oh, that's so easy. It's tough. It's got a high failure rate to first test. Then with um, commerce, watch out for economics. Oh, that's a tricky one. Auditing, accounting, maths. <laughs> IT, it's usually maths or computer maths. Be, be warned. So what we do is we've got academic tutoring, students that will help you because they've been through it, they're passionate about it. Also what I do is lecturers will come to me and say, yo, my students are struggling. And then I appoint an academic tutor that's actually paid and come and assist. But I sometimes found that sometimes students keep quiet and then it's a last minute thing. So even in week two, week three, if you realize this is tricky, speak up because we want to help you. And then lastly, did Mignon tell you about the peer mentoring program yesterday? Yes, 
get a mentor. It's fantastic. They will also support you to ensure that you are academically successful. So before I go to SOS, I'm in trouble, what now? Anybody that will have questions on academic support? I think it's quite familiar terms also because you have maybe such programs in your school or at your previous institutions, I hope. Right. So, I'm in trouble. I'm at risk. I failed many of my assessments in one module or even two modules. What can I do now? What I want to start with and say is students, reach out to your social support. Don't hide it from your sponsors and your parents. Be honest. They can come with you and say, let's book a consultation with my lecturer and with a student advisor. Let's sit down around the table and let's look at what's causing it. What's the reasons? How can we resolve it? Now, students to tell, I've got many stories to tell. I've sat with many sponsors, many students, with a student advisor around the table. And many times it's life that happened. We had a student that was diagnosed with cancer. And she had to go into chemo and she was just exhausted. She couldn't function. We helped her. We accommodate her so that she can pull through. So that's an extreme case. But sometimes it's even I broke up with my girlfriend after five years. Don't laugh. It's painful. <laughs> and that can really and and my girlfriend is in the same class. I can't concentrate at all. Uh, yes, yes. We get solutions for that as well. So sometimes you think, oh, I'm too shy. They're going to laugh at me. Please, we're here to help you. But sometimes it's also you in the wrong qualification. So to say, many times your sponsors say you must study IT. But deep in your heart, you want to do graphic design. I've heard that. And we change qualifications because at the end of the day, you must live your dream. Get a study buddy. I'm so excited. You will see the posters. Inge Amos, she is the SRC for academics. She is also the person driving this. There's a QR code. You can either nominate yourself if you want to be a study buddy. It doesn't mean you have to be an excellent student, but we want to implement this year's study buddies. And a study buddy can, can be more than just two people. You can have a lot of study buddies together and actually have a study group at the end. But that's just to ensure that you're not alone. So I want you to really implement this in your life and you will feel the joy. Then attend the revision sessions. I have had many lectures coming to me sighing and say, it's again the... Students that don't need it, to, that's in my revision class. The students that need it was not there. Attend your revision classes. It's really, sometimes it's the difference between you pass or you have to repeat a module. Then communicate with your parents, communicate with the student advisors, and communicate with myself. We want to make sure that we offer you the whole package that you can taste success and that you can enjoy your studies. Right, so now I think I'm going to open the floor for questions and Kendra, I'm going to ask you to attend to the online questions and then we can break and restart for our last section on special learning needs. Um, so any questions on what you've heard so far this morning? Come on, there must be questions. Yes. Um, so, not like, but just like in general, if someone's struggling to set up like a study schedule or something like that, do you have like resources to help with that? Yes, definitely. We have um, mm -hmm. sessions nationally every week that they will have, you must just watch out the program. They do advertise it. They will have a session on how to plan with our procrastinating. Your exam toolbox, ensure you are prepared and that you don't get anxious when you study. So there's a lot of topics that they cover. 
But if you want somebody to sit with you and help you, you can either ask your mentor to assist you, you can go and reach out to your student advisor, you can reach out to Minion in the wellness space where they can also advise you with that. Any other questions? Right. So I want to emphasize today's session will be loaded onto your orientation and induction tile. Tomorrow you will know how to navigate your My LMS. Um, and you're welcome to go and look again into the resources that we offer. So I would suggest that we take now a break until, let me see. Let's restart 10 past 10. Is that long enough or you want a longer break? Is it long enough? Sure. Okay. We will read, Kendra, you can stop the recording. Thank you. So we... Before we you rush up, how many of you have done your student cards? Yay! Remember, you can wait until one. My session after the break is 